Good afternoon, Year 3. Today's story is called Here I Am and it is written by Patty Kim and the pictures are drawn by Sonia Sanchez. Our story today is called Here I Am. And if we have a look on the blurb, it says, How do you make a new country feel like home? An old keepsake, a new friend and a little time. Walk in one boy's shoes as he takes the first tentative steps towards discovering joy in his new world. This story doesn't have any words, but the pictures that it has are pretty amazing. And they show you what it's like to come to a completely new country. Okay, here he is. Looks like he's on the plane, looking out at his old town. And they get to the airport and look at all the signs. Can you make sense of any of them? Because I can. Imagine looking at them and not being able to read them because they're not in your language. So to you, it just looks like symbols. Look at his little face. How do you think he's feeling? The weather is dark and cloudy doesn't seem like he's very happy. What time of the day do you think it is looking at this picture here? I think you're right, it's night time, isn't it? All of these buildings are lit up. He's in somewhere that's very busy with lots of buildings. Here he is looking out of the window. Taking it all in. You can see all the crowds of people by the shops. And it feels like it's probably quite noisy there. There's a car horn beeping. There are people shouting. It looks like a very busy place to be. Oh, looks like they've just arrived at their big new place to live looks like a block of flats they're putting the key in the lock they're opening the door look at his face there do you think he's cheered up yet oh, and i've just noticed he's got something in his pocket something that feels to him like it's glowing he's all in black and white why do you think he's in black and white I think it's because he doesn't feel like he fits in. He's sad. He misses his home. But he's got this little thing in his pocket to keep him going. That makes him feel like he's being lit up. And he's still clutching this little thing in his pocket. Maybe it reminds him of home. Looks like it's time for bed. It looks like everybody is tucked up. Oh, he's got the little keepsake out of his pocket. And look, it started to grow branches. It started to add some colour into his world. Let's have a look at this page. He's always on his own. Doesn't look like he's made any friends there yet. I wonder if they have moved to London. Because here are lots of train routes like the underground. And that's really confusing, especially if you don't speak the language. Look at all these people on the trains. It's a very busy place that he's moved to. And now we can see that he's gone to school. But on here it says blah, 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 blah. Why do you think it says that? You're right. It's because he doesn't understand a word that anybody is saying. So he's feeling really alone and sad.
And I'm not sure whether it is actually raining in this picture or maybe he just feels like it's always raining because he's so sad and misses home. He's looking quite cross here. It looks like he might be sulking about something and it looks like his mum is leaving to go out with the baby. Maybe he feels a little bit left behind. Maybe he feels like he's not loved anymore. Because as he watches mum go, he stays sitting in the window looking sad. And he's looking and looking and he spotted something. What has he spotted out the window? He leans out. <gasps> And then he drops his keepsake. And then it plops onto this girl's head. There he is, peeping out of his window. Looks like he's shouting, telling her that he's dropped it, but remember he can't speak the language. And she picks it up. And it starts glowing in her hand. And then she skips away. He doesn't look very happy. He looks like he's quite cross. He wants his keepsake back. Here he goes, running down the stairs, calling out the door. Maybe he's asking for her to give it back. And he needs to push past all these people. He's trying to follow. The girl. He looks in the cafe. He looks in the barbers. He can't seem to spot her. He keeps walking. He then hears some birds singing. And look, he's got a little smile on his face. Maybe he's starting to like his home a little bit more. He waves to the people at the fruit and veg shop. Maybe he's starting to feel more at home. He likes the smells coming from the cafe. He's gone to a pretzel stand. And then he gets a pretzel. It's got a little heart. I think that means that he loves it. He gives the man the money. The man seems to inspect it very closely. see somebody walking their dog and it takes a little wee so if you can see there we go makes him giggle I definitely think he's starting to feel happier here he looks like he's quite afraid of the pigeons he doesn't look very happy here but then when he sees they're friendly he gets a great big smile on his face. And then he starts feeding the pigeons. If you notice, the pictures aren't in black and white anymore. They're in colour. So maybe he feels like his world is colourful now, instead of just being boring black and white. Maybe he feels like he's fitting in. He goes through the park, sees some people fishing, some people having a picnic, people reading a book, Feeding the ducks. Walking across the bridge. Oh, look who he's found. He's found the girl who took his keepsake. And he's standing watching her and look at what she's doing. She's climbing up, up, up into a tree. And then she dangled upside down. 
and all these things fell out of her pocket, but look! Here's the keepsake. It lands right at his feet. He picks it up. It looks like they've become friends. Because she gives it back. They take hands and they skip off together. Oh wow! Look, they've decided to bury it together. And look at what it's grown. A beautiful tree. In the autumn, in the winter, in the spring, and in the summer. Look at how the tree has grown and changed. It was growing and growing and growing. It grew into this big, beautiful tree. And then right at the end, He's looking into the river and it says, here I am. He finally feels like he belongs here. He's made a friend and his keepsake has grown a beautiful, beautiful tree. And now he feels like he's part of this new, strange world. I just want to quickly read you this bit at the back of the story because I think it's really, really lovely. Dear reader, here I am, almost 40 years after my mother, father, big sister and I moved from Busan, Korea to the United States of America. I have to admit, moving was scary. New country, new words, new people, new school, new home. But it was also exciting. Not only did this new place have something to offer me, I grew to learn that I had something important to offer it as well. That's why I wrote this story, Here I Am. It is about leaving a beloved home, coming to a different place, and taking on the tremendous task of creating a new life for yourself. In the beginning of the story, the child struggles with the unfamiliar. The signs confuse him. The tall buildings intimidate him. His new school makes him feel lost and alone. He finds comfort in a seed he brought from his homeland, so that keepsake that he had was a little seed. That's why it grew into a tree. It represents what he left behind and what he longs for. He clings to this seed, keeping it with him at all times until he loses it. I think accidentally dropping that seed through the window is the best thing that happens to the child. It makes him go outside, explore his new neighbourhood, engage with some of the people and learn that his new home isn't so scary after all. It is interesting, friendly and even funny at moments. As his fears subside, he forgets about his seed, and when he finally notices the girl who took it, playing on a tree, he actually wants to give it to her. He wants to share. What happens to us when we forget to be afraid? We loosen our firm grip on what belongs to us. We open our hands, we share, we give. And that's how the child's seed gets planted, how roots spread, and how a tree comes to life. I had a dreadful start in America. On the flight over, I got very sick on the aeroplane and threw up on the passenger sitting next to me. I was four years old and I whined incessantly. I want to go back. I don't want to be here. Take me back. You'd think with such a rough beginning the rest of my story would be doomed, but it got better. I made friends, went to school, learned English, studied creative writing, wrote a book, got married, and now have two children of my own. My story doesn't have an ending yet, but I hope and work towards a happy one. If you're an immigrant, or maybe just facing something new and different in your life, I hope my story helps you see that you're not alone. I hope it encourages you to live out of your own story of arriving to that place where you can say, here I am. Best, Patty Kim. So that's a little note from the author explaining the journey he went on and the journey that the boy went on.